Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order of Germany. Let us continue on for the last left off. So Norway has decided that they want to be a little brat. They want to be a little bit stinky. No, we don't want to be ruled by... We don't, we don't want to be ruled by you, Germany. And I mean, I understand, but, you know, times have changed. Revenge of Fat Ferdinand. Thomas waited in eager anticipation as the boring cartoon about German history ended. It's time for Herr Zeit! Thomas tugged on Bormann's t-shirt his father had bought for him, depicting the uh, feared clad in armor of the Sonic Knight. He was Thomas' favorite cartoon hero, braver than Captain NSDAP and Hans the Eagle combined. The episodes weren't all about the Civil War anymore, although the same villains from the Ark still made appearances sometimes. The crimes against the Aryan race could never be forgotten, after all. This episode focused on one of Borman's friends, stupid plump Nam, made Ford Man Schooner, and his plot to betray the nation by placing a rabbit without Goring in charge. Thomas had never heard Schooner before today, but he now hated that fat idiot. Finally, a new villain. He go try to shove the Jewish Bolshevik and John Smith, the American mongrel. Towards the end of the show, Thomas watched in horror as Borman was ready to forgive Schooner's betrayal, only for him to go rabbit like the master and bite Borman's hand. That was the last straw, and Germany's hero could take it no longer. Thomas cheered as Borman beat Schooner across the head and crammed him and Goring into the same dog kennel. He punched into the air along with Borman. Um, he was he punched into the air along with Borman and couldn't help but uh, snicker at the camera that zoomed in on Schooner's whining face. Hide as yet played afterwards. Thomas sang and saluted along just as he always had. There had been one only one picture of Hitler this time, right at the beginning of the song. All the rest were of Borman. Thomas referred it that way. Hitler had been Germany's savior once, but now Bormann was in charge. He deserved the credit. Had Hitler, Hal Bormann, Hal Bormann, Hal Bormann, Hal Bormann, Hal Bormann. Staring into the abyss. What do you think the cartoon looks like? Like, what, what kind of animation style do you think they've got? Do you think they've got, like, the old, like, Steamboat Willy, or do you think they've gone for more of a... I don't know what German, European cartoons look like in the, in the 60s. Is it like, like, like those old, like, Soviet cartoons, or do you think it's, um... What do we do with these guys? Maybe, maybe it's actually like style like uh, K on. Who knows? Okay, get, let's get our field marshal here. We'll have you here. What if it is just like? Um, where do I actually want to put these units? I guess we'll put on the border of Romania for now. It's it's just got like the same animation style as like um, like the Powerpuff Girls when it's a Bell Borman. Anyway, time for Plan B. So does that unlock something new here, or is that conservative loyalty and we gain power? Rifle in the other, carrot in one hand, our one true ally. Stability goes up. Policy cost per capita goes up. Or we cause all of the industrials to lose power. What are you? You're only after we've uh, dealt with this tree, I believe. Okay, so... Let's go for the carrot in one hand. Sounds good to me. I'm hoping that the uh, Italy's will overplay their hand. They have not. So we need to take one of these one to three. We have ten days on this. So as long we need to get over nine. We have a 66% chance to at least tie or win. No, we have a 33% chance to tie, 33% chance to win, and 33% chance to... Um, the other one, lose. <laughs> Rebuild infrastructure here. The thing is, I don't want to spend, like, political power on Colombia too much. It doesn't seem like it's actually that important. Allied ally, supportive on you. I want you on my side. I want you on my side. And the church. Let's pump your loyalty up a little bit as well. 65, I mean, that seems pretty good. Again, I don't want the loyalist or the reformist, I guess I should say, to have any power. The less power they have, the better for us. Okay. Yeah, so just get, we'll just have these units deploy. I don't know how big we really need the German army to be. Actually, how big is the Norwegian army? I've not even thought about that at all. Norway. You have 7 to 15 divisions. Okay, I mean, it's not nothing. We would completely bomb you into smithereens. Like, there's no doubt about that. So you guys better hope that the coup succeeds. The Finnish Soviet Republic has declared war on the Republic of Finland. Okay, so the second... Second Finnish Civil War, huh? Send missile launchers. Oh, look at that. The perfect 10. We love to see it. 
Okay, so that's gonna be uh, Norway, and by Norway, I mean uh, Romania in our sphere. Isolate our savior. I am Hitler. Not me though. I'm not Hitler. Borman's Hitler. I'm 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 Anthony Lamb. Christmas War. So Chile and Argentina are going to be going to war with each other as well, and that's fine. Like it did say, unlocks decision, Entremets Lorchlet. Where is that decision? Is that you? Probably not. You're a national spirit. But it's because it's, it's not a global conflict. Stability from a level of control is at 19.9%. Excellent. And you're fortified the Caribbean. Then missile launchers, siege Bucharest. Siege Bucharest. Oh, no, yeah, this is for this. Um, which we don't need to do. Yes, we can turn you off for now. Because we've already won the great game. So then, I'm honestly, I'm not too sure exactly. We don't have an army commander? I guess, I guess our old army commander probably was the guy we killed, huh? There's no chief of army. No, I know that. Oh, I'm not gonna replace them. There's just there's just nobody that's in charge. Okay, election in Brazil. Civil war in Finland. Someone has resigned. That's fine. Let's get you on our side. Unfortunately, the people do heavily side with the reformists, but I'm sure that won't be an issue. Yeah, I just don't know where this decision is. Unless, like, it's not another tree here, right? No, definitely not. Complete Germany's new banks. Complete I am the Reich. Okay. So, do I am Hitler next. And I guess, actually, all of these armies, so I don't keep pressing this button all the goddamn time. We want you to be assigned. Are you getting assigned? I actually cannot tell. I think there's a very, very slightly... Like a very slight purple tint. I genuinely cannot tell. The Boardman Legacy. The bedroom was swamped with absolute darkness. Boardman stumbled forwards, letting the blackness envelop him. He gave out a deep yawn and placed his half-empty uh, glass of schnapps where he had thought the desk was. Something shattered. Borman cursed with a chuckle, tore off his crumbled uniform, and crawled into bed. Not a single night passed that he didn't expect Gerda to be waiting for him, eager to hear his stories from work. He could never have asked for a more, a more loyal wife. Their thoughts had aligned on policy, on ideology, and on life itself. He smiled to himself, Gerda. She had been so supportive of his sexual exploits, always encouraging him to aim higher every week. She had been a useful tool, faithful and beautiful, delivering tens of his Aryan children into the cruel world until mercury poisoning took her in 1946. Seven of his children were still alive. Three daughters married off to bear his grandchildren for, uh, as dutiful housewives. Four sons, each educated in matters of politics and culture by the party. Ian, Matre, and Bremer. Uh, he did not inquire as to the fate of his eldest son, Martin Jr. He had joined the Africa Corps. The man was either celebrating a survival or rotting in a ditch. Either way, he served the Reich well. As Fury, he could not risk any scandalous affairs or acknowledge any bastard children, and so slept in a cold and empty bed every single night. Undisturbed by the whispers of a woman or the cry of a child, the life of a simple man was not for him. He's dedicated to the Reich and Reich alone. Okay. We captured a Burgundian officer. Fantastic. Because I, I don't think Burgundy likes us very much, which is not super surprising. So you have 92%. Sure, I'll throw another uh, five points into here. Is there any way I can just, like, have them... Like, just go for it? Isolate our political enemies. Like, but, like, why? Fortify the Cater B and stabilize you, gives you more stability. I will spend 50 points. And also, the West Russian Revolutionary Front is going to war in Finland as well. I'm, I'm assuming to probably back the, uh... So, here, you got the Mermaids, keep it with Republic. We got the Finland, we've got you here as well. Use declare war on Onega, which is a puppet of Finland, I think, maybe? 
the Karelian War. I'm not a fan of Russia invading Finland because, I mean, we need to... So if Finland doesn't exist, then this act then we actually cannot do the look to the land of lakes. So we might actually get denied our position in... We might get denied our position in Finland because of the goddamn uh, communist. Romania sided with us. fan freaking tastic Which means that you guys can now undeploy. We'll send you to the border of Bulgaria. I think that seems okay. And Serbia is socialist. They're, they're left-wing nationalist. Which seems bad for, I would say, obvious reasons. But hey, welcome Romania. Glad to have you on side. Now, I'm not too sure who our... Oh, right, because they moved the, uh, the front line. And eh, whatever. I'll, I'll do it manually. <laughs> but, I mean, our faction is looking pretty goddamn good. It actually might be, other than, like, Burgundy not being in it and England not being in it. And, I guess, Norway as well. We might actually be slightly stronger than we were at the beginning of the campaign. Not by much. Like, don't don't get don't get that confused. It's not like we're doing fantastically. But I don't think we're doing bad. Are you new? You okay? Yeah. Let's send you over here as well. Excellent. Equal in the lion. Foreign policy decisions. I mean, I can make you stronger. But the thing is, as well, is do you think these events actually ever fire here? I'm genuinely not sure. Because Colombia doesn't have any actual focuses ready to go. So I don't know if the war in Colombia is ever actually going to begin or not. With all the uh, support I've given to... Given to them. A matter of oaths. Spido is furious. No matter how hard he tried to hide it, Borman had asked him to stand beside him for the speech, which Spido had already agreed to. The issue was, however, that the chief of the OKW had expected simply to a condemnation of Skorner's actions. He had even allowed himself to imagine that Borman would be praising Spadel and his men for the good work they had done in the name of the Reich. However, it seems that Führer had other plans for this address. First began that discussing Schoener's treasons, yes, but he had quickly taken a turn into a more unexpected political uh, venues. When our soldiers plied their loyalty to the Reich and to Hitler, they tended to place their actions on the Reich. They tended to place their actions on the Reich and the great Führer himself. They were not able to defend themselves against madmen, and as such, lunatics like Schoener were able to bastardize their ideals by professing to their treason is done in the Reich's name or to fulfill Hitler's vision. From now on, all soldiers are to pledge loyalty only to the Fuhrer. After all, the Fuhrer is Hitler's his successor, and his will is the will of the Reich. All else is unnecessary. Spidel's draw his drops. The man was in awe. The arrogance and self-absorption is required was astounding. For a moment, he considered walking off stage or verbally condemning Borman, so we knew such actions were a scandal and folly. All he could do was simply stand beside the man, making it clear that by his frown and fear of her brow that he did not endorse this move. He would never renounce the oath he had sworn to the German people and to the German nation, no matter what Borman said. But as the crowd erupted into applause, it was all Spadel could do to keep himself composed. The masses loved the tyrant, it seems. Heil Borman. So removing Spadel's OKW, which is fine. He is the Reich. Fat industrialist. Business tax goes up. Reformist loyalty increases, which I mean seems bad for us. This is really just giving more support for the reformists, which I don't see why I would want that done. We have a coup in Ireland. We got a military junta. Now, is the junta pro-Germany? That's really all I care about. You want to have a military coup, have a military coup. As long as you stay loyal to me. I'm going to throw you, I guess, into a new theater. This one's getting a little bit crowded. Okay, let's assign our commander here. And now, because we have a second army in here, do we need to, like, reshape this? Because you don't actually have a battle plan right now. Do you know actually what I'm going to do? Because you don't have the three divisions. I'm just going to put some uh, more units in like this. There we go. And this will hopefully correct itself uh, as we go into the future. So... We build infrastructure, and this is all just stuff for the foreign policy tab. How much do we have? Eighty-seven. You know, let's stabilize their fronts. I'll I'll be nice to the to the patriotic army. 
That seems okay. We're at 97% strength here. Now, when are you going to collapse? You're negative 100% stability, which seems pretty goddamn bad. Do you have any more focuses to do here? Up here, Africa. Well, we don't know what they're doing. Do I have a spy, right? What's he doing? Build his intelligence actually in uh, in Africa. I want to know what these people are up to. And actually, you know what we can also do? We can get ourselves the civilian intelligence upgrade. Intelligence sectors, economy department. Thank you very much. Now, it would be really funny if uh, Finland was able to actually kill... The uh, West Russian Revolutionary Front. I doubt that'll happen. Do they need to be at peace? No, that doesn't matter so much. A strange letter. The ministry's eyes scanned the strange letter's word of third time, completely incredulous to, as to what he's reading. Earlier that day, the Reichswehr minister received a letter that would be, uh, generously be described as deranged ravings of a lunatic, and all it had left out was who to read of baffled beyond belief. The fourth minister found himself, uh, found attempting to read for himself, to see what all the fuss was about. Now that he had read it a few times, he wasn't quite sure what to think. From top to bottom, the letter made little sense and seemed as though it was written by an incredibly disturbed individual, claiming to be the, uh, from the Vaj of Holy Russia. The letter explains that a certain region of Russia has been reconquered in the name of the National Socialist cause. As the mad writings continue, this Vod states his intention to seek re uh, recognition from the Reich. Or he is just uh, of the belief that the all-powerful international Jews conspire against this new state and seek to smother it in the crib. As he believes that German people have rejected the Jew, the Vod said consider the Reich to be his best bet at attaining international recognition. At some time, the minister came to the conclusion the letter was some kind of poor attempt at a hoax, throwing a crumbled letter into the bin of his desk. Foreign Minister uh, took his turn to the events of science, and perhaps the time has come for some new vetting protocols. The thinly stretched uh, ministry's time was important, and wasting it on inspiring comedians sent them nonsense letters was simply uh, not something they could afford. And you are from... Uh, yeah, you're from this guy over here, huh? Now, I'm not too sure what's going to happen as you maybe get more and more powerful, but I guess we will see. And the strategic uns Polisien. In the weeks following Mueller's attempts uh, meeting with the Fuhrer, the entirety of the German intelligence apparatus changed faster than ever before. This reform removed every uh, redundant agency of the Reich and consolidated all power under the Orpo, with um, Heinrich Mueller at its head. As such, Bormann and Mueller had overseen the foundation of the branches and bureaus under the Orpo's control. One of these was the strategic Unterstoßpolizei, uh, placed under the leadership of the Rhine's uh, Gannett. The SU is Germany's shield of the struggle against the resistance and terrorists who seek to threaten the Reich. The Bureau's main task involves spying on and gathering data on any citizen, suspected treasonous activities, and operates through a vast network of informants, both voluntarily and not. The SU works closely with other bureaucrats or bureaus, uh, as its agents must never act in the information they acquire to protect their secrecy. The party's shield will prevail. But I think that at least right now is a pretty good time for us to end this episode. So if you enjoyed it, thumbs up. Not doing it, always thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.